just to connect with everyone, I've put hashtags through most of my slides. Uh, just to keep you engaged, if, if you find a typo or something, let me know. Uh, so, Vinny is where I was uh, about 25, 30 years ago. I'm about 21 years now, so I don't know how that works. But, uh, <laughs> uh, uh, I'll try to keep things a little interactive. There are prizes for right answers. I didn't bring them with me, but I promise in the next two years I'll give them to you. What's that place? Hands up. Tell me what it is. I'm not even going to give you the name of a country, but uh, you can tell me what place it is. Mansion of the Gods, Men's Hostel, right answer, meet me in two years. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to take you, uh, I was having this conversation, it was actually with Prabhu just before I left, and we were comparing our paths that we took uh, in our careers, and he was telling me, ben, Benji, you've, got, you've taken a very scenic road to neonatology, and I'll tell you why that is, and that will be the title of my talk. Uh, just like the women's hostel gates, apparently this closes at 12, so I'll finish before 12. Quite a long journey. Uh, I'm presently working as a fellow at the Flinders Medical Center and still working as a consultant back at CMC Bello in the Department of Neonatology. For those of you who don't know that, that's working with little babies. Uh, just to get an idea of who's here, how many of you studied or in Bello? How many of you have visited Bello at some time? How many of you have never visited CMC Velo? Okay, it's quite a uh, mixture of things. Uh, so let's go. So what I wanted to be was an intricate web. I promise you these little uh, silver and blue lines that I drew is the only artwork I'll ever put up uh, of mine on stage. So I'm going to take you through 30 years of medicine. Um, and then predominantly the last 10 years uh, where I've been in Velo um, and talk to you maybe not a little bit of clinical thing because apparently we are supposed to uh, use a few medical terms. So I'll throw in a few medical terms just to complete that. But I want to talk to you about our life in Velo, just to give you a holistic view. Vinit's given you a good perspective. I'm very happy you went before me because it's given you a good perspective of the clinical work that happens. Uh, I will touch upon that, but I will also touch upon a lot of the other aspects in Velo, just so that uh, you know what's happening there. Okay, so I'll talk about 30 years of uh, our interaction with medical students. Uh, our networking with mission hospitals, which is something I'm passionate about, uh, how I network with alumni as a global alumni secretary for a couple of years, and then talk to you about community um, community spirit in CMC, and I'm sure a lot of it will make you jealous. Hopefully some of you will come and visit us in Vellore so that you can experience all these facets. Okay, so my scenic path to neonatology, I did most of my training at Vellore from the MBBS batch of 94. Uh, I did my basic and advanced training in pediatrics at BCH and MD between 2001 and 2006. Um, and then uh, I did a, 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 both three, I did in a few mission hospitals in Chennai and Trichy. I worked in as part of Bond and other things. Um, when I finished my Bond, uh, I wanted to train in neonatology. We didn't have a DM course back in Vellore, and a couple of the consultants there said, why don't you come to uh, go to Australia and get trained. Uh, when Sam Ebrezo was here, he guided me. So 2010 to 2014, I did some training in neonatology. Went back to India, uh, 2014, finished my DM uh, neonatology course there. Worked as a consultant and then uh, applied for a study leave here and that's why I'm here. So it's been quite a, a scenic kind of route, uh, uh, which I've never regretted, even though it's taken me through lot, lots of places. I think uh, as a person, I've really benefited from this. Uh, I've also done quite a few trips and uh, uh, visits to Mission Hospital. For those of you, and I'll speak about it when I get there. So five years of medical school in one and a half minutes. Because we're having our uh, 30th year reunion this August, and this was the video that we created for that. All, all these pictures are what was taken during our undergraduate coaching, so it will uh, look at a lot of hostel life, student life, that's us in men's hostel. Don't know what the girls are doing in men's hostel. <laughs> Coordinated for Independence Day. <laughs> Don't know what they're doing here. That was a retreat. 
that was an unauthorized entry into women's hostel. <laughs> Thankfully, this is not gone on to do. <laughs> Music comp. One of the hill flank, best outgoing student. <laughs> First year retreat. talked a lot about our medical school but I thought I'll show you this video because I think that gives you a perspective. Yeah, we didn't attend classes in between the clinics and <laughs> uh, Sorry if that didn't come out properly but we did all those things and we need the, you, you did see medical students in some of your clinics? <laughs> Don't remember! <laughs> I think you need about 85% attendance. Uh, we kind of scraped through. Okay. Oh, sorry. Okay. So that's us. Uh, I told you we were here in Adelaide before this. So this was in 2014, just before we left. Jaden's birthday, and this is 2024 when we returned back to Adelaide. I had one more additional member, Anaya, who's uh, there. But largely, we uh, that's us back in Adelaide. Question, where is that picture? If you've been in Adelaide and you haven't visited this place, the Birdwood Car Museum. Beautiful, so Birdwood Car Museum. Same car in 2011. You've changed the seats because it ripped apart, and that's Jaden and me, 2011. But he was about a year old, and he's no longer a year old. <laughs> then. Uh, so <laughs> one of the things we enjoyed about coming back to Adelaide is obviously recreating some moments. Incidentally, um, we came back to the same house that we rented 10 years ago. Big story there, but we'll tell you that later. So these are the research questions, because this is a scientific talk that I'm going to an answer. How is CMC? Because these are the questions that when we interact with alumni, they want to know on top of all the clinical uh, work that we're doing. Uh, uh, are medical students still the same? Uh, are mission hospitals still relevant? Some of the questions are fun, some of them are a little deeper. Do alumni still connect with each other? And is there a sense of community in CMC? Some of you may say this is not the PICO format for research questions, this is these are just general questions, but that's okay. Uh, but uh, I will answer these questions through the course of my talk. I can't tell you how CMC is. Vinit has covered that in detail. But I can tell you a little bit of the department that I worked in. It's a neonatology department, and that's Dr. Jana who started the department. Um, we had people like Dr. Chellam, Dr. Uh, Prabhakar Moses, who ran the neonatology department as part of the pediatric department. And in 1998, uh, we branched out. For those of you who did your internship there, you'll know that, uh, or later on, there was this JKL nursery, the L uh, labor room, all in a little block, which is now, I think, uh, be became cardiology later on, and now I think is, I'm not sure what's happening to that part. And then uh, we progressed in 2001 to 2002 to the new ISSC centenary building. Uh, I don't think I have a picture of that, but that's, again, one of the central buildings right next to the ED that we went, uh, that we kind of branched out to. Um, we are uh, rather busy. We, in fact, have the highest number of inpatients and, uh, in the department simply because a lot of babies are born in the uh, But we're also quite quiet. Nobody knows us beyond those who visit that third floor in the ISSC building. Uh, so, Vinit, did you even know we had a neonatology department? And did, did you ever see a little baby? <laughs> okay, so it, we often in that, and all of us live our lives in that third, and, uh, third fourth, and second floor between labor room, uh, nursery, and uh, possibly the postnatal ward. Uh, nursery structure, we've got a 15 bed at NICU, uh, which occasionally spills over to 16 or 17 beds, and sometimes our NICU goes out to the corridor. That's how we work. Uh, we have what is called special care or level two nursery. Uh, on paper, we're about 26 plus 10 uh, beds, but often it's a little bit more than that. Uh, if you visit our nursery, you'll find uh, what it is. On days when we're crowded, I get asked to do rounds because I'm the only person who can fit in between the cots to examine babies. Um, uh, we've expanded quite a bit, and that's one of the hallmarks of CMC, uh, which you will notice is uh, when I talk about some numbers, we are going up ex exponentially, and we have actually been given more and more space. 
Um, in the course of the last four, five years, especially COVID and beyond, we kept adding block after block of, uh, for, for our nursery babies. So we added a south block with about 12 beds, uh, which happened over a period of three months. And just before we left, when we were having to say no to babies who needed intensive care, unfortunately, uh, the uh, CMC admin actually opened up the Paul Brand building, which was built for orthopedics and had an ICU uh, that was not yet being uh, used. So we shifted there and we created another 12 bedded ICU there. So one of the hallmarks of CMC that you'll notice is our numbers are large, they're growing, and CMC is expanding, bursting at the seams, and then we pop out somewhere. Uh, that's what it is. Uh, so this will, uh, that's what's been happening. That was a message that we had. We, we are technically a 60 bedded nursery, and this was a message in October when uh, Manish, one of our consultants, I'm still part of the group, and he said we hit a world record. We managed 101 babies in what is supposed to be a 60 to 75 bedded uh, nursery with all these expansions. So uh, if, if you think CMC is crowded, this is why it's crowded. And this is uh, our nursery is still crowded, even though family planning and all that are pretty much top notch. That's our nursery. Now, may not look as high tech as the vascular lab pictures that you show, but uh, I, uh, I think one of the things about taking care of babies, it, you need a lot of compassion to take care of them. Um, and that's one of the things that is uh, that I think we're doing well in CMC. Um, our support systems are very different from the support systems uh, in a city like Adelaide for the, for the babies and families. Uh, the social structure is very different and we look after a lot of babies who uh, just walk in and say, I can't, uh, I can't pay. Uh, so that's our NICU. Uh, that's our, and even though it looks a little crowded, if you look at what is there in the NICU here and the NICU there, it's exactly the same thing. We have the same ventilators. We have the same, if not more, echo bedside machines. We have the same nitric. We have less incubators. We have a few things that are different. But essentially, uh, when I came in here, I didn't have to learn uh, much about the equipment here because we have the same things. It just doesn't, it may not look as uh, as, uh, as swanky as uh, some of the hospitals here, but we have this and we do a few things that I feel that are better. And I, when I come to Mission Hospitals, this little black box here, I'll ask you about it when I come, uh, uh, when I come, to, the, come to the Mission Hospital. Bit. Next question, what's happening here? Somewhere in there, there is a baby. Exchange transfer. Okay, exchange Jim, <laughs> you still remember a bit of neonatal. Yeah, uh, my entire uh, four years back, uh, then in one year, we've done two exchange transitions here in uh, uh, in Adelaide. Uh, we do this. Uh, it used to happen a lot more. This is a photo from the 1990s or 2000. Uh, uh, Dr. Sridhar and two of the registrars doing an exchange transition, but. Uh, uh, we still do a lot more exchange transfusions there. Uh, it's just because uh, I think um, jaundice is sometimes picked up late in the community. <coughs> and this is one of the things that, see, when I started as a registrar 20, 22 years ago, we had two plus one consultants, three consultants, three registrars, one of them uh, went to threaten preterm labor, so we were down to two, and about 60, 70 nurses uh, along. So that was a staffing pattern. Uh, it suited 2001, 2002, it was very busy. Uh, we were all single, so uh, you lived, breathed uh, in the nursery. Consultants did the same. Um, but one of the things that uh, I'm very happy with is in the last 20 years, we've not stayed there. Our workload has become more acute and our staffing has improved. And we've worked hard on this. So we've got at least five permanent consultants, two to four junior consultants now, which is, uh, that's about three to four times the number of consultants that we had uh, in the past. We've got. 12 advanced trainees and 6 to 8 peach trainees in, on the floor at uh, any particular time. Far cry from three uh, registrars when I did my training. Uh, the number of registrars and fellows on the floor is much more, it's much better staff than the NICUs here. I did a night shift yesterday and it was a luxury because we had two registrars on for the night. It was me and another registrar. Whereas now as a standard we have three registrars every night, uh, uh, three to four registrars uh, on uh, night. So, as CMC has expanded, the manpower, uh, the human power has actually increased, but that's been quite challenging for us to get. You know, our admission processes have changed in the last uh, three to five years, and the type of trainees who come in are different, and the type of people who stay behind or stay back in CMC as consultants go on to permanent staffing has changed. 
uh, but our staffing is largely thing and we become multidisciplinary we've got things like social workers clinical psychologists respiratory technician and we are the only department that has an in-house engineer biomedical engineer uh, lactation nurses and uh, office staff that's our numbers won't make sense to you this is our numbers so we've got about uh, 13,000 births in a year. This is the main CMC campus, not including Chad, Roos, and the other hospital. Uh, and our nursing admissions are about 2,500. That's the maternity dashboard from the Flinders Medical Center this month, last month. Uh, about 250 uh, babies born uh, in a month, which equates to about uh, 2,500 uh, to 3,000 births in a year. You have a lot more water births the, uh, in CMC, uh, in FMC than uh, CMC. <laughs> Uh, we haven't yet started water birth in uh, CMC, thankfully. It's just something that we're struggling to, I mean, we, we don't have uh, certain services we can't offer. Looking at this, how many inpatients did CMC see in 2022? Overall, overall, uh, some of the new people who've come in here in the last... 20. For a year? Just throw a number at me, throw a number. Australia. <laughs> uh, we could, but not that good. <laughs> yeah, close. I mean, close. Uh, what's the population of Adelaide? 1.5. So we saw about double that uh, in CMC in a year. We saw about three to four million patients in 2022 as uh, outpatients, <laughs> and about uh, 150,000 inpatients in CMC. And I think this includes Chad and Cruz and stuff. So, uh, if you're looking for numbers, this is why CMC is crowded. <laughs> So I'm going to go on to the next section of my talk. Uh, I told you I'll, I'll be talking about students uh, and a few other aspects. So our networking with students is not just clinics, and Vineet may have uh, experienced that. I'm going to refer to you just to uh, mention continues. If you don't like it, just tell me stop it. Uh, so it's not just classes. We do a lot of fostering and mentoring. Uh, uh, did anybody who worked in CMC take foster children when you were there? They did. Anybody else? No? Uh, so the fostering system in CMC means that every medical student, and actually every student, uh, the doctors take care of uh, medical students, occupational and physiotherapy students. Every student gets uh, allotted a foster family, and that's an open house. So they get considered to be our children, and most of us try to take care of them. Uh, I'll come to that in a bit. We do retreats which again, uh, one thing that we pointed out is there's a lot of spirituality into the training and life in CMC, and that's often a common ground where we build our community together. And I think that's what spills over into our clinical work as uh, high quality care. Um, there's a lot of events that happen, and batch picnics, I'm not gonna talk about batch picnics, it's just something I want to stay away from. Don't ask me why. Okay, so student interactions, tug life with students is what I've labeled this slide. Um, Yes, clinics are core. Anil was my uh, was one of the teachers who taught me quite a bit. Uh, I'm not sure if anybody else was there, but uh, Anil was. They've all taken clinics for us, and we're friends now. Uh, so obviously, there's something more to clinic uh, to clinics. One of the things that we interact with students, and it took me quite a few years, is uh, getting involved in mentoring them outside the clinical or outside the workplace. Uh, I'll talk about fosters in a bit, but. One of the things that uh, our family enjoyed a lot, and it's now become a lot more family focused, is our ability to attend retreats and other sessions with students. So this, uh, which place is this? Uh, those of you who've been in Vellore or lived in Vellore? Um, Not as easy, but... Uh, it's in Yelagiri. Okay. So this is Yelagiri Hills, one of the retreat centers. Mm -hmm. And this is us interacting with students, uh, batch of 2019, uh, with the students uh, and some of the nursing students in various retreats. We always chose to go there as a family because we felt we could uh, minister to them as a family. And often, uh, because I work in neonatology and Becky works in dental, both of us, our interaction with students uh, in clinics is actually a little lesser. We're not, for, we're not the core uh, departments for medical education. So a lot of times I found that uh, this is where uh, I interacted with students a lot more. We, got invited to their Thanksgiving services, baccalaureate services, spoke to them. And in a way, I think it gave us a, a, a lot of uh, perspective to why we are in CMC rather than just go to work, treat patients, take clinics, come back tired. So that was not a life at all. There were so many other things that we were doing. 
So we took only one set of fosters because uh, I think 2019 we took a set of fosters. 2020 we were supposed to come to Adelaide so we didn't take any more fosters. But we soon, soon uh, our foster kids would create this hashtag coolest fosters in town. Uh, so what we used to do is meet them, have them at home. Um, and in fact, when COVID came in and one of them had to get back home, we had to arrange things for her to get back to Delhi and things like that. So the interaction here is quite exhaustive. And they became family members. In fact, when they called us to one of their Thanksgiving services, inadvertently, we all ended up color coordinated. You can see that was their color theme and we ended up uh, the color. That's how we bonded. I felt the bonding was a lot deeper than just calling them home for food. Uh, tell you this story. Uh, it was my birthday and we had a program in Skada Auditorium. I think it was a music concert. We went there and Becky said, let's go for a walk in, uh, in the Bagayam campus. If you were a medical student and you were walking with somebody you loved outside the auditorium, what was it called? Bushing. Bushing. <laughs> okay. Bushing. Uh, for those of you who are not in Willow, that, that's a whole new lecture by itself. We won't talk about it. So here I was. I never bushed a single time when I was in uh, undergraduate college. Here I was with Becky and two kids bushing, think to, thinking to myself, Becky doesn't know what bushing is. She's never been to Willow. What if I bump into two students? How do I explain the two kids I have here while bushing? Um, but obviously I walked through and then our fosters popped up and we had a mini birthday celebration right in the Bagram campus. So things like that uh, are what made fosters special. A lot of times they just drop in because they had issues, they wanted to vent out, their, they were getting stressed and things like that. And I think that's a unique system that CMC has, which I, uh, a lot of us have benefited from uh, that. And uh, I think it's an ongoing uh, thing. With the change in the amount of kind of staffing that we're having in CMC sometimes, and the number of students going up, uh, sometimes we do have issues getting foster parents for all our kids. But this is something that has been one of the best parts of our life here. Obviously, a lot of food involved in fostering. Um, you, if you didn't call them home for food in a couple of months, you got a lot of text reminders saying we haven't had anything. Obviously, even. And I has got an attitude there, making a pizza, look at that face. Uh, and if you did, couldn't call them home, we just meet, meet outside for uh, a meal. And uh, this was something that enriched student life, and I think enriched a lot of us who chose to take fosters. There are huge foster families. A couple of my friends have about, I've been taking fosters for 10 or 15 years, and there are huge foster families uh, that are there. So the next part of my talk is about networking with uh, mission hospitals. Can any of you guess which hospital this is? I don't expect you to. MCH is a clue. Somebody said. You've been there, isn't it? Have you? No. Okay, so this is Madhipura Christian Hospital. And I'm going to use that as an example to tell you how CMC networks with mission hospitals. Uh, during my time, I used, uh, I used to visit a few of the mission hospitals uh, off and on when I could get the time. And then just before we came here in August, uh, uh, May, we went to Madhipura as a uh, family, and I think it was very eye-opening to see the amount of clinical and non-clinical work that are being done in a mission hospital. There's a lot of debates that come by now. If you, if you with batch groups, uh, the WhatsApp groups that you have, sometimes uh, it, uh, there's a lot of discussions that happen. Our mission hospital is really needed these days. Uh, can't we just merge with the government system? Uh, some mission hospitals are not doing well. Should they just close down? But if you visit a place like this, you'll realize there's a lot of work done. So uh, this was some of the things that we do. Madhipura is about, I think, 50 to 100 bedded hospital. Uh, Arpit was the MS uh, yeah, batch of 95, he's a surgeon. Uh, and then we had about three, four consultants and about five to 10 junior doctors, fresh graduates for probably you know, a year more than what Manith is. And they were doing the C-sections. They were resuscitating babies. They were assisting in the surgeries. They were taking care of neurological cases, and they were making calls on how to refer babies, uh, refer patients when they couldn't offer the care. Madhipura is about three kilometers away from uh, three, I think, ten kilometers away from the district hospital, which is as big as the big uh, CMC Bagan campus. We we drove through it once, and uh, they're busier than the district hospital there, simply because uh, patients are taken care of. And that's just one of the examples that we have. So during our trip there, we did a lot of medical work. Um, that's the nursery there. That's a pediatric ward that looks very different. 
took a, quite a few classes for nursing and these are all needs that are there in the mission hospitals. Just taking a simple resuscitation class for the nurses there, they're so thrilled because they feel they can manage babies a little better. 10 o'clock in the night, junior doctors taking a class for them. That's how passionate they're about uh, learning things so that they can manage that. So mission hospitals, I feel, are still relevant. Um, and uh, they do a lot of good work. Yes, there are some who are struggling and some whose relevance is different. I won't say lost, it's different because they're more in the urban areas. But yes, I do feel they're still relevant. They need a lot of support. And I'll tell you uh, a few things that you can do that just makes them feel better. What we did in Madhipura when we went as a family, rather than just do clinical work, we integrated with life there. So kids went to school there for a week. Uh, Jaden and Anna went to school there for a week. There was a nursing day celebration where the kids uh, uh, we had SHP students, they, they participated, evening games, a lot of meals together. That made the experience a lot better because I think uh, you look at it from a, from a more holistic point of view, rather than just go say, teach NRP, take classes, set up the nursery, buy a couple of new equipments, come back, that's good. But do it this way and you touch their lives a lot better. And the best part about this trip was uh, I think as a family, uh, we became more holistic, uh, we made, we became much better people uh, as a family. So this is what happens when you decide to support mission hospitals. All WhatsApp messages, uh, so 2015 I network with uh, uh, MCH and then uh, with Raksol and a few other things. This is independent of what CMC was doing. Uh, and we've done things like video rounds, WhatsApp rounds and things like that because they need the support. And every, uh, now it's almost every day we, we do a virtual kind of rounds where they tell me what, what's happening to a patient. It's the same story every day, but just telling them, yes, you're doing it right, you're doing it okay, is quite good. Now, things like this, I showed one of our advanced trainees one of these messages, and she thought this, it was a tertiary care hospital somewhere with a huge infrastructure. I had to tell her, no, it's, uh, it's 20 year old doctors who are looking after these babies, incubating them, giving them inotropes and trying to save them. Um, a lot of uh, clinical data that we get. Guess what this is? Yeah? Autoclave. Oh my god. <laughs> it's a speaker. It's a speaker. It's a Bluetooth speaker that costs 1,000 uh, thousand rupees, $20. What did we do with it? So we started music therapy in neonatology for, for $20. Doable, not doable. The way this happened is when we accompanied the students, the medical students to MCH, and they used to join nursery rounds, we were talking about music therapy, and we said it's something simple, parents will like it, they feel you're getting better care, babies may benefit as long as you're not playing Bollywood or rock songs, uh, soft instrumental is good, uh, proven scientifically, tried uh, a lot uh, in various centers, and after we left the medical students, the six of them said, we'd like to donate a speaker for this. And that's how we started. That's all it takes. It's a small nursery, so a 30 or 40 watt speaker is enough. We made rules about how we play music therapy, when to do it. And that's all it started. One, I think it took about a week to get it sorted out. Same thing in CMC is that little black box that you saw on top of the speaker. Little bit, because we've got three, four sections. We pipe in music, one hour in the morning, one hour in the evening. Flinders wanted to do it a budget of a few thousand dollars a month for live music. They wanted uh, live music. So same thing, different ways, different budgets. So uh, obviously this therapy is also for the doctors and nurses there because it's always coming to have some music there. So that's how it is with Mission Hospitals. I feel they're still relevant and they're very adaptable. When I visited in 2015, 8 o'clock in the morning, Pradeep, my friend who was there, said, we need to revamp ED because we don't have enough space in the particular area that we're doing. Walked through the hospital, took a room. 10 o'clock, we had ED set up. Uh, moved all the drugs. 11 o'clock, a child came seizing. We <laughs> managed to be in the, in the ED. So the logistics, in if you attend the mission hospitals, are very different. What takes months, in a, even in CMC group, can get done in two, three hours in, uh, in other places. Impacts are huge. So I feel they're still relevant. They're still relevant for us. I think as a healing experience, as a holistic experience for us, for me to network with them, has been a huge positive to, uh, uh, I think as a family, we have been the winners in networking with Mission Hospitals. 
CMC does a lot. There are funds available for CMC doctors to go visit hos uh, hospitals. There are funds available for mission hospital doctors to come back for training to CMC. So there's a lot that's uh, uh, happening. Um, there's a lot, I think uh, uh, a lot of the doctors who retire do a lot of uh, hospital showers. I think they jump hospitals, uh, go to three, four hospitals and make sure the quality of care is increased there. Okay, so I was alumni secretary for about two years through COVID, uh, lost out on conducting two reunions. For those of you who don't know, every year in August, we have a massive reunion for batches, 25, 30, 35 uh, years and so on, uh, who studied uh, medicine 25, 30, 35 years back. It's quite a huge gathering and then we had COVID, it went off. And then we uh, had the reunions again. I had to conduct two reunions in a matter of two weeks to kind of uh, uh, catch up with everything that happened. So there's a lot of activity there, some entertainment, a lot of the meetings, there's a tree planting ceremony, some awards being given. It's a fun life. Now, the funny thing with me being alumni secretary uh, for those two years was I got called the obituary person, that guy who did the obituaries. Because most global alumni, uh, because we used to send out weekly newsletters and obituaries, uh, my name was tagged at the end of obituaries. Uh, it may sound very, very uh, bad, but I think it gave me the opportunity to look through the lives of a lot of people who had done amazing things. And it's not amazing things because they they got awards and rewards and they were they got multiple degrees or they went to multiple countries. Their lives were, there were people in mission hospitals, there were people in private hospitals, there were people who changed careers and it was just so amazing to look at after five to six years in medical college, paths can be so different. And each of them impacted other people in so many ways. So our alumni being networked, yes, we are. This is an example. One of the consultants I worked with uh, 10 years ago in Adelaide would be into well order. His name was Simon James. He said, Ben, when you come to Adelaide, you've got a Friends of Wellor group here. When I went to Wellor, I didn't find a Friends of Adelaide group there. Why is that? <laughs> I mean, a, a group like this or the Saturday Fellowship and things like that is, uh, I think, very, very unique. From a world perspective, it's not something that you see I don't think any other hospital, any other alumni has it this way. Uh, it's just something that you take for granted when you're here, that we take for granted when you're back there. But you speak to anybody who's even graduated from Harvard or things like that, it's never so intimate and personal uh, uh, this way. Uh, if you've been to any of our alumni reunions, uh, I think Nancy is going this year, I'm going in this year. Um, if you, it, it's, it's just such joy to see, not just your own classmates back, but uh, for those of you who come after a while to CMC, it's just it's just huge seeing just that Baga and campus, spots where you did pushing before and things like that. It's really good to see those spots again. Spots are occupied. Yeah, spots are occupied. <laughs> you don't need to do a reservation, Bupi. <laughs> campus life. So we have multiple campuses. We've grown, started with the Baga and campus, went to the hospital campus, the KPTR campus, I think quite a lot of us, how many of you stayed in KPTR campus? Nancy Boopi, uh, quite yeah. a lot. You were there? Oh yeah, you were there for a while too, yeah. Alice was there, so KPTR is Kagita Patre campus, it's a huge campus with a nursing college and a doctor and nurses accommodation that's there about one kilometer away. And uh, now we've got Ranipet campus, which also has a huge residential area. Did you go to the residential area? It's, it's a little behind, I think it's about two kilometers behind the uh, uh, hospital campus. And you showed how beautiful Baga and campus was. So campus life is vibrant. When uh, Jaden, my son, comes back from school, he comes in at four, we come, come in at about five, I don't see him till seven, seven thirty. He's out there playing with kids, he, there's a basketball court, that he can go for tennis coaching, there's a music room upstairs where he can just go uh, and attend classes. Um, uh, quite a lot of greenery in the KPTR. Bagan campus is an entire, there's the oval, there's an indoor badminton court, there's table tennis, uh, there's a lot of coaching classes going on, not the student coaching classes, uh, games coaching classes going on. Campus life is, is just vibrant out there. I was speaking to my friends in Chennai and they said, if your son is going for tennis coaching, playing football every day, is going for music class, how many hours do you spend shuttling him around? I said zero, because he just walks down and he's there. Um, this is the Kagida Petra campus where we stayed. Christmas uh, carols, Christmas program, a lot of kids. And then obviously when you have IPL, you have live screenings with barbecue and stuff. Uh, and it's just, you just walk down and it's there. You just step out of your house, it's there. It's, I think, something that adds, uh, uh, when, my, when we came to Adelaide, Jaden was saying that's one of the things that he misses a lot about Velo. Uh, 
Um, that's one of the things that we miss a lot about Bello. Um, and I think if you look at it from a worldly perspective, not many people, we are lucky because we meet each other at least every couple of weeks and uh, things like that. But this kind of vibrant campus life, Baga and KPT, Alani Pet Hospital, is just something very unique. Uh, it's, 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 it's really nice. Uh, I think uh, it's something that you cannot get in what we call first world countries because we seem to get more isolated. A community event is rare and it's often expensive. This IPL barbecue chicken, 120 rupees per piece, that's two dollars. And I think uh, these are all usually about a few cents each. So if I give my son what's the equivalent of five dollars, he comes back. Ah, had a good time. So, um, uh, so I'll end. I'll come to the end. So life's busy there. Life's busy in the law. Life's busy in CMC. We're doctors. We work hard. We party hard. That's what the equivalent of partying. But that doesn't mean that uh, we are in Velo, We're stuck in Velo, We're we're just at work, coming back to work tired. We do a lot of other things. There's plenty of family time. There's plenty of family time. One of the things that has changed in the last 20 years in CMC, I think work-life balance is a lot better. Um, speaking to some of the professors who are retiring, and during the days when they were family, they barely got to see their children 20 years, 20, 30 years ago. Uh, but now things are changing, and that's, I think, one of the attractive things about CMC. Um, so for us, this is how our life is. Um, that's my son and daughter. In, uh, we did virtual church for a couple of years with COVID, and they became the uh, technical, the more technical support for the church team. Uh, grandparents always around. Uh, my mom stays with me, so Anaya and Jaden are pampered quite a bit. A lot of trips. That's a place called Dintical, which nobody will believe has a place like that. I think that's a couple of beaches. My uh, siblings don't stay there in the US. Network with them through Zoom. Which place is this? Where Jane is jumping off? We need, you can't answer. <laughs> that's College Hill. That, that's uh, College Hill. So a lot of hill climbing. I think you can do College Hill. You can do, what are the other hills you can do? Toad Hill. Toad Hill. And uh, what's the other one? Balamati Hills. Oh, uh, Balamati Hills. We went there. With, so there's another one that you go up and down and then finally reach. The Kailash, Kailash. I think we've done Kailash uh, once. That's pretty hard. Uh, a lot of activities, but uh, a lot of family time too. What What was that building next? Chapel. chapel. This is the uh, uh, college chapel. This is the back of chapel. Back, back. The back, uh, the other side of chapel. Yeah. College. college chapel. Yeah. So what uh, Vinay showed you was the front view, which is on the other side, and this is the back view. And in front of this is that huge, slightly green area where uh, Sunken Guard. Sunken Guard is in front. Sunken. This is the back of uh, chapel. And one of the things that we've loved as a batch uh, was uh, staying connected virtually. So, you know, one of the identities that we have, for those of who do the, did our undergraduate, is which batch you are, and batch of 94. And it's not just with unions, we still have class plays every month, virtually. And during COVID, we did a couple of virtual products, uh, projects, so that was our Christmas wish. And that was another thing when people are going through, some, some of our batchmates are going through some very negative experiences during COVID. Uh, and wanted an outlet, so we did a virtual number, uh, wonderful merciful savior with kind of, you know, uh, just to encourage people at the workplace and at home. Did a lot of virtual other projects, uh, uh, <coughs> including roping in Graham Kendrick for a project with our church there. So there's a lot more uh, to our lives than just getting to work, a bit of music, a bit of fun, drama. Whatever you can do in CMC, you can do. If you're an artist, you can be an artist. If you're a musician, you continue to be a musician. If you what else can you do? If you're good at cooking, there's plenty of outlets for you to cook. Not just your husband who's going to eat your food. There's a lot of other people who will laugh for your food. How many of you remember IDA 150? IDA 150 was an event, I think, 2020, December, 150 years of CMC. Virtual, so we had a lot of people joining in from Australia too that we networked with for both fundraising and as a, as a 24-hour live stream that we went through uh, to kind of make people aware of CMC and that was a tech team there. <laughs> That's how we had it. looked very good at the outset but that was us, uh, uh, mostly medical people trying to run a Zoom show for 24 hours. So there's a lot of things that you can do outside that we do outside. So when we come here, 
we are not just qualified doctors or medicals who are coming in here from CMC. We are humans. We are human beings who actually uh, have a lot of experience. And when we come here, or when we go to places, we want that experience to continue. Uh, yes, you. Uh, uh, it's our CV has a lot of details about our qualifications or CMC experience. That's what probably gets us here. But what keeps us uh, going is a lot more than just our medical qualification. <coughs> So that's where I transitioned from. That was me the day before we left Velo. And that was me, that's me somewhere there. Uh, when we came here, I was very shocked when I came to uh, Flinders in August. We were still doing masks. Uh, and I think it was December by the time we took off the mask. So I came from a place where we still wore masks in, uh, at Velo because we were working with pregnant babies. But that's what we transitioned into. So I'll end with this. Uh, Two quotes that uh, kind of inspired me from one of our class fair sessions when I think a person called Rajiv Chandragure spoke to us. Two things he said. Uh, and these were the words that I, and I, I shared. This was from a slide I made for medical students when I was speaking to them about success, pursuit, and purpose. And looking back as a family and as an individual, uh, these two make sense to me. So your pursuit of success can make you lose your purpose. And the second thing he said was, a successful person is not necessarily purposeful. I often look back at my life and see why am I here? Why am I coming to Australia? Why am I visiting a mission hospital? Why am I turning up for work? Why am I coming back home and playing with my kids? Because the world looks at success. If your CV looks good, if your house looks good, if you've got a, number, a certain number of publications and ticks, the world considers you successful. That's what's needed for promotion. That's what's needed. The world never looks at purposeful. For me, a day at a retreat with medical students who are crying their hearts out is a lot more purposeful than putting a pick line on a 500 gram baby in the middle of the night, as it was repeated last night. Not that one is lesser than the other, but often we concentrate so much on one that we lose sight of the other. We live our lives as successful human beings but you have to question as to whether that was also purposeful. And as a family, what I've showed you as a community, as alumni, as fosters, as students, is the fact that there's a lot more purpose to our life than just uh, ticking off the boxes that tell us, yes, you've gone from registrar to professorship. You've done your study leave, you've done your sabbatical, you've set up new services, you've trained so many people. And I hope that is a positive message for all of you here. Thank you for this opportunity. Hashtag. Thank you very much for that uh, wonderful view of the law and the, the way it meshed very well with our first uh, speaker as well and give us an overall pattern. It would be remiss of me if I didn't uh, put in an advertisement for the, uh, the law dinner, which we haven't had over COVID, but we're reintroducing. It's on August the 24th. And the director, Victor Matthews, will be coming out to speak at that dinner and give us an update of the very latest that's, that's happening in, in Belor. So we're delighted. And, and here's it's the nice. um, please take uh, one of these, uh, and it will direct you to how to uh, sign up for that dinner on August the 24th. And we're very excited about reintroducing.